Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, magandang hapon po. So this is uh, a progress of my uh, dissertation. I hope uh, to finish uh, my work uh, probably next uh, uh, April. So the uh, title of my uh, presentation is uh, Integrating uh, Information Technology and uh, local knowledge to detect and uh, measure uh, forest degradation. And uh, as I said, uh, I consider this uh, presentation as part of my research process and I hope to get uh, comments uh, from the audience for the uh, improvement of uh, my research. As uh, you have uh, probably guessed, I'm working on uh, red or the uh, reducing emissions from deforestation and uh, forest degradation. Additionally, uh, red plus includes uh, conservation, sustainable management of forests, and uh, enhancement of uh, carbon stocks. So uh, pre preventing uh, the situation like this to happen is uh, one of uh, red uh, activities. And uh, my research aimed at uh, contributing a solution to uh, one uh, technical problem that has been identified regarding red, which is the uh, difficulty of uh, detecting and uh, measuring uh, forest uh, degradation. Another problem with uh, forest degradation is the uh, absence of a common uh, definition of uh, forest degradation. And uh, there are actually many uh, existing uh, definitions in uh, literature, but uh, many of them are difficult to uh, operationalize, such as this uh, definition by uh, FAO. Now, uh, IPCC attempts to uh, specify the uh, important uh, elements in the uh, definition such as uh, by uh, specifying the uh, number of years of uh, forest decline and the uh, decline or the amount of reduction in uh, carbon stock. And uh, it also uh, tries to identify the uh, baseline, baseline year. Now, for the purpose of the study, we are adopting uh, this uh, definition from the uh, voluntary carbon standards, which is uh, persistent reduction of uh, canopy or carbon canopy cover or uh, carbon stocks, but which does not result in uh, conversion of forest to non uh, forest land, which is uh, already uh, deforestation. Uh, sometimes uh, it is an issue how to uh, draw a line between uh, deforestation and uh, forest uh, degradation. Uh, the Philippines has come up with the definition in a cutoff in terms of uh, prone closure, which is uh, 10 percent. And uh, in this uh, illustration, we would see that uh, in my uh, study area, despite uh, losing uh, persistently uh, forest cover, majority of the uh, grid has uh, have more than 10% uh, uh, tree cover. Meaning uh, we are still above the uh, threshold of uh, deforestation, which is 10% uh, uh, tree cover. 
uh, red movement encourages uh, development of local uh, methodology and uh, we are biased to uh, remote uh, sensing as the main uh, uh, data source for uh, measurement of forest degradation. Red projects would uh, certainly benefit from uh, development in uh, remote sensing, especially the uh, increasing uh, spatial uh, resolution. There was a speaker uh, before in this uh, seminar and uh, she mentioned that uh, the, the uh, government is planning to upload uh, 0.6 meter uh, uh, resolution of uh, satellite imagery. But the constraint is that uh, nowadays uh, high uh, spatial resolution is still very expensive and uh, there might be no good solution for uh, cloud cover problem. So for major resolution, our option is to use uh, multiple uh, data sources. So why uh, remote sensing data? It uh, one thing covers a uh, large tract of land. For example, uh, this uh, image state covers around uh, 35,000 square kilometers. And uh, of course, uh, RS data is an excellent data source for uh, repeated measurement and uh, monitoring. It is important in uh, carbon trade. It can uh, provide uh, historical data and uh, remote sens sensing data is still the best data source for uh, inaccessible areas. But the medium uh, resolution remote sensing data is not so dependable for uh, forest degradation uh, measurement because of uh, poor discrimination of uh, ground closure at uh, 30 meter resolution and uh, the inconsistency of uh, estimates across time uh, seen or uh, season meaning uh, the estimate for May uh, for the above ground biomass might be different for the estimate uh, for rainy season like uh, December and the uh, weak relationship between uh, above ground biomass or ground closure and the uh, spectral uh, response. So this is an example of the uh, weak uh, relationship between uh, the above ground biomass and uh, the, the uh, normalized difference uh, vegetation index. You can see the uh, value of the R squared is uh, very low. So for major resolution data, such as the one uh, we are using, uh, one solution is to increase uh, the amount of ground data and uh, to use uh, high quality spatial information from local people integrate uh, GIS uh, ancillary data and with the uh, integration of local knowledge uh, it is uh, but uh, appropriate to uh, use uh, simplified but reliable methodology and uh, to employ some uh, alternative uh, computing techniques. So uh, in this research, we are uh, putting together the following data sources, uh, Google Earth uh, imagery, uh, remote sensing data, particularly Landsat, field data, local knowledge, and uh, uh, GIS uh, ancillary data, particularly those that were derived from uh, digital elevation models. Uh, my uh, advisor uh, suggested uh, information technology to uh, encompass Google Earth remote sensing and uh, JS. So that's the reason why uh, there is uh, the word uh, information technology, but we have not uh, finalized the uh, title yet. So my study area is located in uh, Nueva Vizcaya. Around 90% uh, of the land is classified as uh, public land or forest land. 
agriculture has been uh, transforming the thick uh, contiguous forest in the area into uh, thin uh, forest patches. There is an ongoing uh, community-based uh, program. One of the objectives is to uh, improve the uh, forest cover. So you would see a uh, positive change from uh, uh, low vegetation to high vegetation also in the following slides. Uh, this is a common uh, scenario in my uh, study area. Uh, right at timber or trees compete with uh, rice and corn, but farmers retain uh, timber as a future uh, timber source or a fuel wood source and to soften the uh, tree clearing violation. Burning is the main uh, means of uh, land clearing. And little by little, farm uh, expand into uh, forested area, particularly affecting the uh, forest uh, edges. Dirtling is a practice together with burning. But uh, timber harvesting is not uh, widely practiced. But cutting for household consumption is uh, inevitable. If uh, we see a lot of uh, evidences of forest degradation, in some areas, uh, natural uh, reestablishment of forests also occur because of long follow and uh, abandonment of uh, parks in uh, areas that are not anymore uh, suitable for burning. So uh, we have seen a lot of uh, photographic evidences of forest degradation, but uh, these uh, evidences uh, taken at one point in time may not be enough to establish uh, forest degradation occurrence in the context of uh, red or red plus. A time series data is, uh, of course, uh, necessary. For example, uh, with the histogram match uh, Landsat imagery, we can see uh, the, the, you know, the quantity of the white pixels that represent uh, low amount of vegetation has uh, increased from 1989 to uh, 2010. And this, this is uh, uh, a little proof of forest uh, degradation. We can also use uh, other da uh, data sources such as uh, Google Earth if uh, high resolution image tree is uh, available. So this one was uh, uploaded or dated uh, April 5, 2006. And uh, four years later, uh, Google Earth has uploaded uh, another uh, image link and uh, we can see that uh, in some areas uh, tree cover has uh, disappeared. So indeed, the high resolution Google Earth imagery is a very important data source and uh, this is important for the study. It is an excellent uh, visual aid for uh, eliciting special information from local people. So with Google Earth, we were able to uh, delineate the watershed from the image itself, map uh, streams, roads, and other points of interest, including uh, vegetation. And uh, it is a very important uh, source of data for uh, reference data for accuracy assessment and uh, a guide for creating uh, land cover reference polygons. Those are supplied by uh, local people. Of course, uh, with Google Earth uh, image, we, we, we are able to uh, create uh, a base map with uh, minimal input from uh, the field. With regard to uh, remote sensing data, 
uh, we are using uh, land satellite uh, DM and uh, enhanced schematic mapper class data. So all available data from the internet pre-evaluated uh, according to uh, usefulness that is uh, the cloud, cloud cover over the study area should not be too large. Uh, we use uh, reflectance values instead of the uh, original uh, digital number. And uh, this is uh, what we would like to uh, demonstrate with uh, this study. We uh, are uh, employing uh, the vector technique. And uh, to check or uh, to compare the outcome of the vector technique, we are also doing modeling, the usual modeling of uh, above ground biomass using uh, spectral data and derivatives as the uh, uh, independent uh, variable in uh, regression equation. So, uh, as a measure of uh, forest carbon stock, uh, it is still the above ground biomass that uh, uh, will give the best, uh, which is the best indicator. And uh, with this, uh, we are implementing two uh, approaches in uh, quantifying the uh, above ground biomass. The first approach is uh, to simply uh, classify the uh, land cover of vegetation according to uh, carbon density carbon density and uh, multiply it with uh, an above ground biomass factor from uh, field data or from literature. Another one is to uh, direct estimate the above ground biomass from uh, remote sensing data. So uh, in this case, uh, spectral data are the uh, independent variables in uh, regression equation. So one specific objective of the thesis is to compare the uh, two approaches based on uh, accuracy assessment results. So this is a simple illustration of the uh, two basic approaches. As you can see, for the approach one, uh, it is simply uh, doing a classification and uh, a class must have uh, an uh, above ground biomass uh, value uh, that uh, should be multiplied with the area of the class to be able to estimate the above ground biomass for the class. And uh, for the uh, second approach, this is uh, simply relating the uh, pixel, pixel value with the above ground biomass obtained from uh, inventory, from inventory. So uh, with approach one, we attempted to uh, discriminate as many uh, as possible uh, crowd closure classes based on uh, manual interpretation of uh, high resolution imagery. And uh, we came up initially with uh, 13 uh, classes, but uh, some tests uh, that were conducted later on resulted, resulted to uh, having only five uh, classes, and uh, they are uh, color coded in the uh, slide. So we have the FC1, FC2. FC3 and uh, wide uh, three hedges per merge. Uh, rice paddies and water uh, was quite easy to detect in uh, remote sensing image 3. But uh, this one, uh, the black uh, colored uh, text, uh, were not uh, discriminated in the uh, so we use uh, the Jeffries uh, Mat Matosita method to uh, separate classes. Values that uh, are close to 2, let us say 1.6 to 2, indicates uh, good uh, separability. 
and uh, values uh, lower than uh, what I mentioned indicates uh, bad uh, separability. So uh, as you can see, uh, the I merged uh, a lot of uh, initial classes into uh, big uh, class. So this is the uh, the following slides. I should say give the uh, description of the. Uh, different uh, classes, but uh, I'm not going to discuss this uh, in detail. So FC1 uh, refers to uh, closed canopy forest. As you can see uh, in this uh, high resolution image, uh, we can even uh, able to, uh, if you are familiar with the site, we can e even able to del delineate uh, some individual crown. And uh, the shadows are quite thin, which indicate that uh, the trees or the canopy are more or less uh, uh, have the same uh, height. FC2 refers to uh, relatively open to open uh, canopy forest. Here uh, you can see that uh, the shadow are quite uh, thick, and or the strip of the shadow. Are quite uh, wide and uh, long, indicating uh, that uh, vertical uh, stratification of the trees are quite uh, pronounced than uh, the closed canopy forest. So that is an indicator of uh, disturbance in uh, forests. FC3 uh, is a uh, sparsely uh, tree cover forest. And uh, with the uh, field observation, we notice that uh, this uh, class is dominated by uh, some lovely uh, trees, or they usually the short-lived uh, species. And uh, this is uh, a shot of uh, the uh, class three forest. You can see. Uh, uh, patches of uh, open areas and uh, grassland under uh, trees. This, this one is another shot. The big class uh, is the, uh, I call it uh, grass brass uh, cultivated, which is a mixture of, uh, in terms of uh, imagery, a smooth and rough texture smooth for grass and uh, rough for patches of shrubs, uh, banana, bamboo, and uh, trees. So uh, this is uh, it's not uh, very clear with uh, this uh, uh, slide. But this is a shot of the uh, GPC class. Uh, rice, rice paddies and water, or the uh, white streams, it's quite easy to uh, delineate in uh, image three because of the uh, reflectance value of water. Usually it uh, turns uh, black for a time. Okay, so this is an example of that. For the uh, above ground uh, biomass value, we, we have uh, the values in this table. So uh, FC1 has uh, 41.71 tons of uh, above ground biomass per uh, cell or per uh, 30 by 30 uh, square meter. And uh, the value for FC2 is uh, uh, almost half of that of FC1, same with uh, FC3. Uh, for the other classes, uh, we obtain values from uh, literature, particularly the work of uh, Dr. Lasko. So the uh, above ground biomass for uh, rice and uh, water is contributed by hedges of uh, trees, shrub, uh, bamboo, and banana surrounding this uh, particular uh, ground feature. So we use uh, Brown's uh, formula to uh, calculate the uh, above ground biomass. Uh, These uh, formulas have been uh, used 
in many, in, uh, many publications already in the Philippines. And uh, this has become the official uh, formula for uh, calculation of uh, above non binals So uh, we discriminated the uh, classes in the image way, as I mentioned before, uh, with the vector technique. So this is a new technique that uh, we would like to demonstrate it, to demonstrate with these mixtures. And uh, classification is simply done by means of uh, class holding. So with vector te technique, we are able to uh, better uh, integrate uh, remote sensing, GIS uh, inventory data, and uh, local knowledge. Vector is going from uh, vector and raster to those who are familiar with JS. They are the two uh, standard data formats. And uh, its, its main uh, advantage of a raster format is that uh, we can store large uh, data sets from uh, various sources. And uh, analysis is carried out through uh, a simple uh, query operation and uh, mathematical operation. So a little uh, review about raster. So we can see here, for uh, raster analysis, uh, we need uh, four layers uh, if we have four uh, data sets. That is uh, the uh, raster analysis. So because uh, one raster layer is for one uh, data set only. For example, slope, uh, hip shape, for example. Okay. While uh, for the vector, we can uh, compile uh, all data sets into one uh, layer. And uh, the, uh, the column or the field represents one uh, data set. And we can combine. Okay. Analysis in uh, vector is usually done through a uh, simple uh, structured uh, query language and uh, by some uh, basic uh, mathematical operator such as plus, multiply, uh, divide, uh, subtract. So the picture of this uh, vector uh, format is that, uh, as I said, we can com com uh, combine large number of data sets. For example, uh, time series uh, Landsat data into one layer. Classification is done through uh, threshold. Analysis is carried out in uh, GIS software rather than in uh, remote sensing software. More uh, people are familiar with uh, GIS than uh, remote sensing. But the main lim limitation is that uh, the usual uh, neighborhood analysis is not possible with the uh, vector So some check must be done to uh, see if the, uh, trans the transformation from the uh, image uh, fixed cell value to a uh, uh, grid cell value has been uh, preserved. And uh, we can do that by uh, running uh, simple uh, regression such as this one. And uh, we can see that uh, the L squared is uh, very high. So the data has been uh, preserved. And uh, the visual, uh, visual comparison of the uh, resulting maps indicates uh, similarity between the uh, image uh, pixel uh, values and the uh, transform uh, values. So uh, with the vector technique, the, the classification uh, by threshold is the uh, crucial part of the uh, study. And uh, for the uh, 2006 land cover, we uh, mainly use uh, Google Earth. We use uh, 2006 uh, data set because uh, that is the date of the available uh, land, uh, available uh, high resolution Google Earth map. So uh, we have uh, 
uh, direct comparison. For the uh, present year or the 2010, we uh, use uh, mainly the field data and the uh, inventory data. For 1989 and other years, those years without field data and without high resolution uh, image we, we uh, mainly use uh, or mainly depend on uh, local analytics. As I said, uh, this one uh, was crucial in the study, the uh, uh, class holding. We, we did it uh, by uh, manual iteration. So this is the uh, threshold of the reflectance value to uh, classify the uh, different uh, forest classes. And uh, we obtained a fairly high compared to literature of about 77.9 to 3 percent accuracy. Accuracy means uh, comparison with uh, field data because that is uh, the usual thing being done in uh, uh, use of remote sensing data. If you want to see uh, its accuracy, you have to go to the field and uh, look no? uh, if uh, the uh, outcome or the computer outcome is the same with uh, what is uh, seen in the field. So lower accuracy was obtained with uh, other uh, set of thresholds. And uh, the message is that uh, no other combination could yield the uh, overall accuracy of uh, around uh, 78%. So we accepted that. So what uh, prompted us to use uh, vector technique? So we mainly base our decision with the uh, accuracy assessment of uh, results and uh, we by implementing uh, an unsupervised ISO data classification we obtained the uh, lower accuracy with the uh, ISO data classification meaning it's uh, unsupervised we are not uh, employing any field uh, data uh, the result for uh, supervised classification uh, was something that you are not going to accept right away because uh, you see, no? uh, it's all green, a uh, little yellow, and uh, some uh, blue. Meaning, uh, this is not what uh, we expected. Although we use uh, very good uh, training uh, uh, pick sets, but uh, the outcome is uh, something that uh, you would not uh, really accept. So uh, we also uh, build the threshold for other data sets. So uh, we have here different years because uh, we are up there uh, analyzing the change in the land tour. So uh, we, uh, with, a, with vector technique, we uh, built a methodology where local knowledge is a necessary data source. Especially with the uh, threshold specification, uh, we relied on uh, local knowledge to, uh, for us to be able to see that uh, or to know that the outcome of uh, computerized classification is, uh, is correct no? based on uh, local knowledge. So we go to the field, we ask uh, the local people about uh, the uh, land over in the past. For the 2010 data, there's no problem because we have uh, inventory data. So we use uh, some uh, visual aid like uh, maps uh, printed on the large star plane. And of course, uh, with uh, during uh, focus group discussion, we uh, plus photographs of the landscape or uh, the landscape itself by uh, viewsheds because uh, we are in a watershed and uh, people can uh, easily see the surrounding. If uh, you go to uh, selected uh, viewpoints and the uh, focus group discussion is uh, a necessary uh, part of the uh, methodology so uh, let's go to some uh, initial results of the study so here we can see in this graph that uh, the uh, 
above ground biomass uh, really decline, especially in uh, uh, close canopy forests. Uh, the open canopy forest also declined, but uh, at much uh, smaller rate because of the uh, input from uh, the uh, closed canopy forest, meaning the closed canopy forest is uh, transforming into uh, open canopy forest. As expected, the uh, uh, cultivated area increase. So this uh, are the maps uh, representing the uh, 1989 and the uh, 2010 uh, vegetation? Here is the uh, drop of the net loss in uh, above ground biomass in uh, the four uh, periods. Uh, you might notice uh, why uh, the years are not uh, that uh, distributed because we relied on uh, freely available uh, Landsat data and uh, these are the only data where uh, cloud uh, coverage over the study area is uh, minimal. Uh, I tried to buy uh, high resolution data but it's too expensive. The offer from a local supplier uh, to cover the study area was uh, 130,000 pesos. So uh, it's uh, out of reach, even with the uh, Sherpa funding. <laughs> so we just, uh, my advisor advised me to use uh, uh, data available from the internet. So uh, we can see, you know, if we end up uh, the losses for the uh, two periods, for the three periods, it would more than uh, total than the, uh, the same uh, period, 1989 to 2010, which is uh, a uh, clear indication that uh, forest regrowth is, is occurring in the area. It's not only degradation. Uh, the re thickening of the forest is also happening. So plus, uh, of course, the canopy forest declined steadily from 1989 to 2010. Uh, the open canopy forest also declined, but uh, grew as well. The uh, sparsely tree cover forest also increased because of the establishment of uh, Jimelina plantation. And uh, obviously, uh, cultivated area uh, increased. So high carbon forest is going to uh, steadily decrease because people or the core interview, refer to uh, includes into large uh, and contiguous forest plot rather than into a uh, smaller patches of uh, relatively open canopy forest because uh, obviously of soil uh, fertility uh, there are fewer claimants to compete with in uh, a large forest plot and uh, the patches at lower elevation have uh, months already and uh, they use burning for clearing the land and uh, if you're burning uh, patches inside large forest plot uh, there would be less worry that uh, it would damage uh, other property property because it is a government naman yun, eh? okay. so uh, in this uh, slide we see the dominant of the uh, cultivated area being formed uh, out of change from uh, from uh, other classes. So uh, that's uh, the trend. Okay. The uh, watershed would uh, continue to uh, degrade in terms of uh, forest growth. The uh, expansion of uh, grass grass cultivated class is the uh, most notable and uh, the close canopy forest is likely to, tra to transform to uh, FC2 okay. and even to uh, cultivated area directly because that is they are the target of uh, cultivation or clearing. 
and uh, cultivated area may actually revert back to uh, forest, no? especially at a considerable uh, time period of uh, say 20 years. So we can see here the uh, pattern of uh, fragmentation. So for there are many uh, areas where changes uh, did not occur, of course. But uh, as we can see uh, in the map, the uh, changes involving uh, the close canopy forest is uh, more uh, aggregated than uh, the other uh, land classes. Uh, the uh, sparsely tree cover, this is a more dynamic uh, land cover type. So uh, you, you can see that uh, they are uh, less uh, aggregated. In the okay. So for the uh, approach to, uh, you may recall, uh, we have uh, two approaches. Uh, we have discussed uh, approach one. For the approach to, this is a usual uh, modeling of uh, above ground biomass. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we use uh, linear regression, where y is the, uh, the dependent variables, the above ground biomass. And the uh, x's are uh, spectral data grouped into the following individual uh, bands, uh, vegetation indices, and uh, band ratios. The principal component, uh, tasseled top uh, texture measures. This, these are the fully technical terms in uh, remote sensing. Uh, in the same manner, uh, the, the above ground biomass was calculated using a Brown's formula. And uh, we use uh, 50 plots of 20 by 20 meter, but uh, for model building. And, uh, 20 plots for uh, model uh, evaluation. So for the individual uh, TM bands, uh, we have uh, we use uh, six bands. Band uh, six was uh, left out because it is a thermal band. It's not useful for this uh, work. So uh, this uh, vegetation indices and band ratios came from literature actually. We use uh, normalized uh, difference vegetation index, the enhanced uh, vegetation index, and uh, other uh, indices and uh, parameters. So uh, we also calculated the uh, tassel count and uh, principal components, and uh, textual measures. So uh, we uh, selected uh, seven by seven uh, window size from uh, 3 by 3, 5 by 5, 9 by 9, uh, 11 by 11, uh, based on the number of uh, significant uh, correlations between the uh, dependent and uh, independent variables. Under the texture measure, we use the uh, data range, the mean, the variance, and the uh, entropy. So uh, stepwise regression was used to select the uh, best model from each group and uh, combination of groups. And for model evaluation, we use uh, R squared, the adjusted R squared, the uh, root mean square error, and uh, of course, visual comparison with the reference model. And for this presentation, I will uh, present only uh, four models, which are the following. Uh, the models are quite simple. Uh, consisting of uh, only one or two uh, independent variables, and these are just uh, linear uh, models. Uh, no need uh, for variable transformation except for the uh, above ground variables, which is uh, logarithmically transformed. So, at the result, the one with highest uh, adjusted R squared is uh, model 13 and uh, but the one with the uh, lowest uh, root mean squared error is uh, model 4 meaning uh, uh, you expect uh, inconsistency with uh, if you are using different uh, uh, evaluation tool for uh, model performance 
So these are the uh, resulting maps uh, of the four models. The uh, FC1 has been uh, highlighted based on Google Earth map. Uh, these areas are included in the study area but uh, covered by clouds. So uh, we have to mask the cloud in the analysis. Uh, I didn't uh, see uh, anything to the cloud. And uh, the problem with model 4 result is that uh, you can see a lot of uh, close country forests in an uh, un, uh, unexpected place. Uh, this is the, uh, you are familiar with the watershed. These are the uh, lower elevation area. Uh, the result uh, with model 13 and 1 appears to be okay. And uh, for model 8, uh, the closed canopy forest, the color, color green in this uh, uh, slide, uh, appears to be uh, two sparks. So we will choose uh, model uh, 13 and 1. We also uh, conducted uh, a simple comparison uh, based on the uh, above ground biomass of the landscape. So uh, for the vector technique, uh, which is uh, one of the objectives of the study is to compare the output of the vector with the uh, usual modeling of above ground biomass. Uh, the difference is quite uh, small with uh, model 4. But as you can recall, there's problem with uh, model 4 because uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, close canopy forests. Uh, at uh, low elevation. So uh, the difference uh, between the vector and the other model are quite uh, high but still uh, acceptable. So uh, these are some uh, initial findings. Uh, different models may give uh, different uh, above ground biomass estimates and the uh, variations might be large. Uh, measures of model performance are uh, inconsistent, so uh, we still have problem of uh, identifying the best model. And uh, the vector technique which uh, is being introduced in this study may provide uh, comparable estimates of uh, above ground biomass of a landscape result of the usual regression model. So medium resolution satellite data is reliable in uh, detection of forest degradation. We can uh, demonstrate that uh, forest, forest degradation is, is occurring in uh, a number of ways. And, uh, but uh, not so useful for uh, measurement. Or uh, we, we, we should be ready to accept uh, quite lower uh, accuracy. So we, to uh, enhance uh, the result, we should uh, have uh, a reliable ground data and uh, information from local analytics to uh, enhance the confidence of the students. Okay, so that's uh, all, and uh, thank you. By the way, uh, uh, Professor Valesteros' uh, presentation, the PDF version of it, will be uploaded in the Circo website later this week. And also, uh, you can see uh, at the back, uh, he is being videoed. Uh, all ADSS presentations are being uploaded in the Circo website. You can watch it again and again and again for whenever <laughs> if you want to review, especially for your own study. So any questions from our audience regarding the presentation? Yes, Dr. Mauricio. Thank you, Professor Paristeros, for your very interesting discussion. Uh, you think this will be acceptable to people uh, involved in forestry, both in government and private. 
because my uh, uh, experience is that uh, in my dissertation for the PhD here, I, there, uh, I studied the effect, the ecological effect of uh, selective logging on uh, deep river forest in Surigao. And I made some recommendations. It, these recommendations were not acceptable because accordingly they are too geological and very expensive. In your case, uh, the, I think Model 13 is accordingly is the best. Do you think uh, this could be uh, uh, what they call uh, 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 approved by the DENR and uh, the colleges, the universities, so that we can clearly detect the degradation and do some remedies because, well, well, with the politicians now and the people that uh, accordingly they are squatting inside the forest uh, very fast. So there is a need to detect uh, early and then do some remedies so that we can minimize uh, illegal, illegal and legal destruction of our forest. Thank you very much. Actually, we are doing a simplified procedure with the uh, freely available Landsat teammates. Right? And uh, we also encourage analysis with uh, uh, Google Earth, which is also freely available. And uh, if the plan of uh, really buying a high resolution uh, satellite image to push through, and the uh, red project will be really more uh, participatory. And uh, we can we can uh, tap the local government or foresters in the field to uh, uh, report uh, degradation of forests with uh, freely available uh, uh, high resolution image stream. So uh, that's uh, one uh, uh, objective of uh, uh, one 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 targeted contribution to research. Uh, well, uh, these uh, techniques, uh, it is very good researches that produces techniques, usually are produced by uh, academ academic, academicians. And in the fact of academicians, uh, especially those that are teaching, they never go to the field. They prefer to stay in the air-conditioned rooms in their uh, offices. <laughs> so, my suggestion is, people like you who produce these technologies should go to the field. In my case, I resigned from the faculty to implement my, my recommendations. But in the two companies, company, affiliated, company, uh, affiliated companies I, I was employed, I was practically dismissed. So, well, after uh, dismissal, I prefer to retire. Now I am very tired. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions or comments from our audience? Yes, Dr. Merkin. I am being Merkin and I am retired psychologist. I am not a forester. But I have some observation that uh, maybe, I, I know that you, you are trying very hard to work in the quantification, all right? of the forest cover and its apparent yes. degradation. But what I have noticed in some of presentation that is similar to yours is that it does not take care about the intruders, the humans and the people that time after time or decade by after decade, they are continuously the one degrading the forest, aside from the natural calamities that happen in the forest with human Larson's time. They are constant mayonnaise to the forest and there should be somehow some quantification of this uh, forest and the people who are there or who are intruding into the forest. There is no index like that. I am a cytologist, that is why I'm, I'm, uh, I'm amazed that uh, you, have, if you have to accept a lot of effort. You know the pro I'm a plant pathologist and I would, if I would like to compare, I have a nice rice plant 
and uh, my intruders will be some diseases. So, to cure uh, the diseases, I have to take care about the, uh, the disease, not to be able to inflict uh, uh, damage to the, uh, to the plant. Uh, of course, what I'm asking may not be a part of your dissertation, but uh, it seems to be anthropogenic in nature, and some things should be done about it. Another thing that I might also point out, have you given some uh, seminar to DNR people who in any way are in charge for the environment so that they may be able to use what uh, you have found out? Uh, for the uh, second comment, maybe uh, after, my, after finishing my uh, degree, so we, we go for publication. But not a direct seminar to DNR people. A seminar is depend on their yeah, because uh, the DNR people may not uh, read your publications. Sir, for your uh, first comment, uh, so in uh, urban trade, we like to simplify uh, everything, and uh, it's just uh, important to be able to establish that uh, the change in forest is human cause and uh, or anthropogenic, and that's all. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, quantify uh, how much how much uh, change the uh, how much damage uh, the community inflict. Or in fact, uh, as you can see in the uh, definition, uh, it's quite uh, simplified. That uh, forest degradation is just a change in uh, a carbon density. Because if you are going to include, uh, for example, wildlife, soil, uh, water. Uh, quantification of those things are uh, very, very difficult to do. So with, with uh, uh, just carbon stock, it's uh, still uh, uh, difficult, and uh, if we include more variables, uh, it might not be uh, possible to, uh, to quantify. Thank you very much, Professor Valdez. Can we give uh, Professor Valdez a